What's up all? Today I wanted to review my girlfriend's E90 BMW. This is a 328XI in a very unusual, I don't know if it's purple or red, like a purpley red type of color, but it's an interesting color. Uh, we are currently selling the car as she doesn't want to deal with BMW problems and I don't want to deal with her BMW problems, but it's a pretty pretty good car. It's just, you know, if you don't know a lot about cars, a 15-year-old BMW is a dangerous proposition. But yeah, so just to go over the car, it's a 08 328XI. It's all-wheel drive. So it's good for the snow. It's relatively nice looking. It's in good shape. New tires. Brakes are pretty good. And overall, it's, it's a nice looking car. I like the color, to be honest. It's probably not something I'd buy for myself, but it's definitely an interesting color. So, this being a 328, it's a six-cylinder. It's a three-liter six-cylinder, which has nothing to do with the 28. That's BMW being dumb, like all the other German automakers. Confusing numbers, for some reason. So your 328 is a three-liter straight six, naturally aspirated. A 335 is a twin turbo straight six. I don't know why this couldn't have been a 330, but who knows? So yeah, just look around. It's obviously a four door, nice shape, moonroof, 17 inch wheels, uh, and this is the oh, cloud headlights. Uh, this is the era. I think it's a Bangle era three series. So, most people don't like the body style of this 3, 5, 6, and 7, but I personally like it. I think it's definitely more aggressive looking than the generation before, the E46, which a lot of people like. I had one. Personally, didn't really like the auto myself. Even a manual one, I just didn't, honestly, it wasn't, wasn't my thing. This is not really my thing either, but I, I do think it definitely looks better. Um, this has far more tech than the previous generations because the E36, not tech at all. E46, not really either, but this is when it really jumped up where, like, they have lots of computers. There are sunshades in here. There's computer modules in the trunk. Um, it has Bluetooth. It's got paddle shifters. It's got... Well, climate control is normal, but navigation, it's all stuff that you didn't really get until this generation. This isn't the first year of this generation, but um, it's, it's an interesting come up, to be honest, from the prior generation. Um, it's definitely more, there's less feel. I would say there's le it's like less of a driver's car, but all all-wheel drive BMWs kind of feel like that. When you get all-wheel drive in a 3 Series, it kind of washes out the front end feeling a little bit. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's two axles or what the situation is, but I can tell you there's just, there's not as much feeling in this. It's very competent. Like, you know, it's got big tires, 230 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere between 230 and 250. Who knows, because they use the same six cylinder and it's been changing numbers for years, so they could be lying, but I don't really know myself. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's very peppy. Uh, it does have paddles, so you can mess around with that a little bit, which is kind of nice. And yeah, let me take you to the inside. Let me show you what's going on in there. All right, so just as I was saying, this is the first year of the really tech heavy BMWs. This part's pretty standard. I mean, it's just CD. DVD for some reason. I don't know why you'd be playing a DVD. Unless you put the nav disc in here. Um, standard climate control, but this is the first year of the big screen. It's the first year of the push button, or first generation at least, not first year. I think first year was 06. Um, paddles, which are... This one's real stupid, because this is... It's a push-pull system. I don't know why. I mean, pull on each side is the easiest way, but if you doesn't work like that with this you go up a gear down a gear up a gear down a gear on the same paddle which is it's just unintuitive honestly it's pretty dumb but so i'm gonna show you some of the tech okay so like i said first here the push button push button's behind here a little one away from all the pushing you got your screen over here with all the functions 
the first year for the 3 Series, not first year, first generation, for iDrive, so you can mess around with all this stuff while you're driving and get into an accident, which is great. It's actually, this is a terrible system. They made a lot of nonsense about this when uh, it came out. All the journalists hated it because it's just it's just unintuitive. But luckily, um, if you do want to do other stuff, I mean, at least your climate control is over here, so that's a plus. That's important. Volume knob is here, so you don't have to mess around with the volume. Um, your tracks. Currently, this is not working as far as the Bluetooth goes and as far as the audio system goes. But, eh, I mean, it, when it did work for a small portion of time, it was, it was not bad. But, uh, yeah, so going into the interior, there's a lot of wood. It's plastic, as you can see. It's cracking here. Plastic. These are okay. I mean, the, the sides are all right, but, you know, it's really plasticky in here, and the quality is not particularly great. We had this issue with a couple of things on the car. As you can tell, this is a different color. This has been replaced. That was broken off. The cup holder was broken. I changed that. Some of the wood paneling here was in the door. It wasn't great, so I changed that as well. Um, yeah, these just don't. Unfortunately, after I think the, I don't know, people say after the E30, E36, E46, it really depends on when you look at it. I think people say that the quality has really gone down in BMWs. In my opinion, the E34 5 Series was probably the last really well-built car. I'm partial because I have one, but it's just so much better build quality. I haven't had to replace any interior parts, and my car is 14 years older than this car. It has less miles, but this is 127K. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not bad build quality. It's obviously, like, better than, you know, if you get into, like, a Ford. But, you know, it's not great. But like I said, I'm partial. I don't really like plastic. Don't give me... Don't give me plasticky wood. Just give me some kind of colored plastic or something. Or metal or whatever. But none of this plastic. I don't like it. But yeah. So you've got this little fold out here for a cigarette lighter. Close that up. Functionality wise, it's not bad though in here. I gotta say that. You got your center console. Stuff for a phone jack in there. Uh, pretty useless small cup holder. There's a cup holder there, but it's not great. That I'm guessing is for a phone, but I can tell you that phones don't look like that anymore, so that was probably an 08 type thing. And here you got a little bit of stuff. Pull this forward. Stuff under here. Lock that up. A little pouch over here. This is kind of nice. I don't know what it's for. Maybe a sunglass holder, but. But practicality-wise, it's, you know, it's not bad. It's relatively big for a 3 Series. It has nice colored seats. This is a nice bright interior. Uh, I would say the sound system's good, but honestly, I can't tell right now. But, yeah, it's not bad, you know, for what it is. I mean, these are like six, $7,000 cars, so I feel like it's not, you know, you get what you pay for. This is this is really not a terrible car for six, $7,000. The maintenance is, you know... Eh, here or there, but you get a lot of car for six grand. You know, it's fast, it looks pretty decent. Um, mileage is not awful because these ones actually come with the six speed. The E46 automatics came with a five speed auto, which is not great. It's a little slow to shift. Um, and just on your on the highway, it's just buzzing, it's just way too much RPM, which is not, you know, it's too much gear, too little transmission. Yeah, I'm gonna take you on a little drive. Let's find a little cup holder. And just, uh, you know, give my driving impressions. All right, so we are gonna just take a quick little drive. So, the car obviously runs really well. You know, the six cylinder has been a tried and true thing for a BMW since, I don't even know, 30s? I think they've been using a six cylinder. Maybe even earlier, who knows? Those cars are you know, different, I would say, from what we use today. So yeah, this is, like I said, six-speed auto. Um, the cars are still relatively light. I think this is about a 3,500-pound car, which is not bad for, you know, six-cylinder 
all wheel drive, four doors, and you know, 230 to 250 horse. Cars are just gradually getting bigger as far as weight is concerned. And you know, you add a lot of tech to it and just they just keep getting bigger and heavier. It's just funny to think that I'm quite sure that this 3 Series weighs more than my 5 Series. I think my 5 Series is about 3,400 pounds. This is probably like 35, 36 because it's all-wheel drive. Obviously, if it was a uh, rear-wheel drive and manual, it'd be lighter, but uh, it isn't. So, yeah, that is what it is. But you can hear it's nice and smooth. You can hear that over my jib jabbering. Brakes are good in this. And steering's tight, it handles well. It's not like this doesn't handle well. Um, there's just a lack of feel in the more modern BMWs, to be honest. It's tough, because my first car was an E30, and I currently have an E34, and those are just, there's so much feeling in the steering and the chassis that it's really hard to pick that up in any other car. To be honest, I don't. I, I, I rarely drive, or I rarely feel like I, I have good steering in a car. Cars just feel really numb. You know, once they've gotten to hydraulic, it numbed out from the days of manual steering. And then now they're, everything's electric steering. Some are okay. I, I have, uh, I had a couple of minis. The minis are still pretty good, honestly. So, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. BMW is just, they're a lot more capable now. I don't know if I'd say they're more fun. I mean, the power, obviously, there's more power as you keep going up. Like, my V8 has less power than the six cylinder, which is it's kind of sad, but, but it's very reliable, so that's a plus. And these are, I would say, the last really reliable engines. The 335s, like, they have a lot of issues, and they're hard to work on, so it's never fun. So, let's get on it a little bit and see what goes. Sixty. Okay, that's not bad. A little bit of a shudder, as my tires are not full of air right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice. The automatic's good. I mean, this, I think this is the first generation of the six-speed auto, um, as far as the three series is concerned. It was probably earlier in the five series, probably by like a year or two. But these are nice. They handle well. You get a lot of creature comforts when everything works. Heated seats, which you could have got since, I think, 1988 in BMWs, but... You know, obviously this car has it. It's got heated seats, all-wheel drive. As a winter car, it's a pretty reasonable winter car. If you don't have like crazy amounts of snow, because you can use this all the time and it'll get you back and forth. But for winter duty, to be honest, it's low. Like it's a, a relatively low car. So you're not gonna have any ground clearance. So chances are you'll get stuck somewhere. But handling wise, I mean, it's, it's very capable. Like, it's kind of amazing how capable just a base 3 Series is. It's not exactly base, I think the 325 of this generation, there was a 325 XI. And that's what I would consider base, but, yeah, I mean, the chassis is really stiff in this, the steering's sharp. I wouldn't say there's a lot of feel, but it's definitely sharp. So the car does what you ask it to do, which is nice. Let's see, it comes out of turns. And this six cylinder has so much torque, and it's. It, this is one of the best engines BMW has ever made that's like a non M engine, and it doesn't have. You know, this makes as much power as a US spec E36 M3, and it has far less issues uh, mechanically. The engine sucked to work on, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I did a valve cover gasket and it just took like years. 
it's just the worst. There's so much plastic cladding on top of this, and it's just not as easy to work on as the older cars, which is kind of why I'm not hugely into this, but I mean, like I said, for six, seven grand, this is like, like it's fast. Like this is not a slow car for, you know, my girlfriend paid, I think, eight grand for it, and we're currently selling it for six, seven area. It's, it's a lot of car for six, seven thousand dollars. It's kind of amazing what German cars to appreciate too. If it was new, this would have been, I don't know, it's relatively loaded up. Maybe high 30s, low 40s. And now it's like six or seven grand after 14 years, 15 years. That's why it's tough to buy a German car new. It's great that you get a warranty. Man, do you lose so much value in these cars. Just rough. It's great to get something at the bottom of a depreciation cycle. Like this is probably eh, about as low it's gonna go. It might you might lose like two, three thousand, but versus you buying this new, like if you bought it new and sold it now, you would have lost like thirty-five thousand dollars or something like that in value, not including maintenance. And if you financed it, you'd be losing money in interest. And essentially, you're setting money on fire. I mean, and everybody does it. I mean, new cars sell. It's not like they don't. If you look around my neighborhood, there's new cars everywhere. Oh. That's a nice E36. Yeah, like I said, it's, you know, it's a good car for what it is. It's a really good daily. If you need one car and you want something kind of fun, um, an all-wheel drive BMW of this generation is not bad. I mean, put aside some money for maintenance and fixing stuff up, because we bought this from a dealership, inspected quote unquote, but there was a lot of issues still afterwards we had to fix to make it, you know, reasonable, reliable, and just usable. For me, it would have been, I still want it, but my girlfriend's driving it, so I especially want it to be good. Because, you know, if I'm not around, I want it to be safe and usable. But yeah, that's my review. I'm about to pull up, go inside. And if you got any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks. Bye.